Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to be preparing some solutions to some POA past paper questions dealing with income statements. Now, before you go any further, if you are having trouble preparing income statements, as in you're really not sure where to start, or maybe you know how to start, but the adjustments always confuse you, then I'm going to put a card right up here and a link in the description below that will carry you to a playlist of videos I have, I have created before that will teach you how to prepare an income statement from scratch. You will learn how to do a trading account, which is the cost of goods sold section. And I have separate videos showing you how to prepare income statements for accrued and prepaid expenditure and revenue, by the way, <laughs> um, provision for bad debts and the provision for depreciation. And I have a final video that brings them all together. Okay. So if you want to check those out and then come back here, please feel free to do so. If however, you think you're comfortable enough with income statements and you want to see some of the tricks that CXC has brought, then let's take a look. Okay guys, so the first question that we're gonna take a look at is the Jan 2019 paper. Let's take a read of the information. So the following trial balance was extracted at 30th June 2018 from the books of Zodiac Express Incorporated. Okay, so we have a basic looking trial balance here, uh, capital, oops, we have some items in the same line. Okay, uh, inventory, oop, receivables and payables, okay, returns, discounts. So we're gonna have to figure out which one is which. Uh, wages, salaries, expenses, da, 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 da. oh, some depreciation here. Okay, not bad. Aha, additional information. This is where the good stuff is. So we have closing inventory, that's a closing stock. We have utilities, outstanding. Outstanding is a keyword meaning accrued. So we know what to do with that, don't we? I so hope we do. Rent was prepaid, that's another keyword. Well, it means prepaid. So we have to adjust rent for that. And we have some information about the depreciation here. We have one asset being um, depreciated via the reducing balance method and another being depreciated using a straight line method. So let's see if we remember how to do this. All right, so the first thing to do is we have to start heading up the income statement. First thing to put is the name of the entity, which is Zodiac Express Incorporated, name of the statement, income statement, and the period to which it applies, which is the for the year ended 30th June 2018. Let's get some dollar signs going here for our columns. So the first item we need is the sales figure. Now, let's go back across this. So purchases and sales are in the same line. Now, purchases is, a, is an expense which has a debit balance. So this is purchases. And sales is a revenue which has a credit balance. So this is your sales figure. So that's 174,432. Now we have an adjustment to make the sales. We have returns inwards. We have to subtract that. So let's go to the returns. So returns, we have a debit item and a credit item. Now, which one is which? Now, now returns inwards is subtracted from sales. So if sales was a credit item, to decrease a credit item, we have to have a debit balance. So the 1975 is the returns inwards. Another way you can think about it is that when people return goods to you, returns in, your asset of stock is increasing and assets increase with debits. So the 1975 is the figure we will use for returns inwards. I'm going to subtract that to get net sales and now we have to subtract the cost of goods sold. So we start with the inventory at, at start, which is 99.27. Now it says here, inventory 1st July 2017, 99.27. Now 1st July 2017 is basically the start of this year end here, right? 30th June 2018. The next day after 30th June 2018 is 1st July 20, 20, 2018, which is one year after this. So this is the year start to this year end. So that's opening stock. To that, we have to add purchases. Now, purchases, so since we know that the 174, 432 was the sales, this is the purchases, right? Purchases has a debit balance because it is an expense. Long story short. Just like with the sales where you have to subtract returns inwards, with purchases, you have to subtract returns outwards. Also, if there was carriage inwards, you'd have to add it. That's the, the delivery cost on the goods, which form part of the cost of goods. We don't have it in this question, so we don't have to put it in but we will subtract the returns outwards. Now the returns outwards, the returns inwards figure was the debit item, returns outwards is the credit item. Now why? Now if we are returning goods to somebody, our asset of stock is decreasing, we're sending goods back. If our asset of stock decreases, a decrease in an asset requires a credit to be recorded. Also, um, the returns outwards decreases purchases. Purchases has a debit balance. To reduce a debit balance item, you need a credit item. Okay, so that's going to give us net purchases of 99,803, which we add to the opening stock to get our cost of goods available for sale. 
From that, we subtract our closing stock. Now, that's where you go down to the additional information, and we see our closing inventory right there. So we subtract that, which will give us our cost of goods sold. That is also subtracted from the net sales to give us gross profit. Now, if you have any other revenues, they would go here. If you've watched my previous videos, one that you have to pay particular attention to is if you have a decrease in the provision for bad debts. In this question, there is no provision for bad debts, so we don't have to worry about it. But generally speaking, take a look in your credit column for any items that may be revenues. Let's start. First one is capital. That's not a revenue. Sales, dealt with already. Payables, well, this is, remember, um, between receivables and payables, this is the asset. This is the liability. Assets have debit balances. Liabilities have credit balances. So, and neither of them go in the income statement. Returns, where we debit that already. Aha, discounts. So discounts, the debit balance would be the expense, that's discounts allowed. The credit balance would be the revenue, that's discount received. So that goes there as well. So add discount received, giving us that. Now, a couple of things. One, um, some students have told me over the years, the teacher says there's no such thing as adjusted gross profit. That's what I was taught. And I know things change, knowledge, cha knowledge changes. Um, if your teacher says there's no such thing as adjusted gross profit, then don't put it, right? Don't go and argue with them. And discount received, I've seen some relatively newer income statements that actually minus discount received in our calculation of net purchases and actually subtracting discounts allowed from sales to get net sales. But I don't know how many of you would have seen that just yet. So if you haven't, I've done this income statement primarily with you in mind. If you have done it, well, you know what to do with it. At the end of the day, it wouldn't make a difference because this would probably be the same except for the discounts allowed. But we'll get to that shortly. Okay, so now we have some expenses. So let's put less expenses. Now the only two expenses that we have to adjust for are utilities and rent, on, and yes, depreciation. So any other expenses like wages, like discounts, wages and salaries, motor vehicle, we won't have to worry about any accrued or prepaid portions for them. So the first one is discounts allowed, 322. Then we have wages and salaries, 31,851. Then we have motor vehicle expenses, 1121. Okay, so rent and rates, rent was prepaid. We subtract prepaid expenses or prepaid portions to give us, uh, in this case, 8451. And then we have utilities. So you, the utilities expense is outstanding, 225. It's an accrual. So we have to add that back. Now, the depreciation. Motor vehicles, 25% reducing balance method. How do we find the depreciation charge under the reducing balance method? We multiply the depreciation rate by the net book value. How do we find net book value? Cost minus the provision for depreciation in the trial balance, which we have right here. So we have motor vehicle at cost and the provision for depreciation up to that point in time on that asset. So that's what we're going to do. We will find 25% sorry, of um, that, 7,900 minus 3,480, giving us 1,105. For the shop fittings, it's just 10% of the cost of the asset because it's a straight line method. So straight line method depreciation, multiply the percentage by the cost of the asset, which will give us that. So now our total expenses will give us 45,682, which are subtracted from the gross profit to give us a net income of 28,685. So there you have it. That was the 2019 Jan question. Um, the biggest tricks in this question were that they gave multiple items or two items in the same line for a few things, right? The um, purchases and sales. Uh, receivables and payables. If you're doing a balance sheet, you have to know what's going on there. Your returns and your discounts. Uh, and apart from that, there were just there were few adjustments and they weren't very difficult as a matter of fact. Okay, so if anybody has any questions about any particular item, please put them in the comment section below. If not, well, I hope you understood. Very happy to help. And let's get to the second question one time. Okay, guys, so let's take a look now at the Jan 2016 question for Derek Davis. So we start off by taking a read. Derek Davis, the sole proprietor of DD's Jam Shop, started trading on 1 Jan 2015 and provides you with the following list of balances, which was extracted from his books on 31st March 2015. Now that's in bold, that's in bold, and that tells us that this is not for an entire year. This is just for how many months? Jan, Feb, March. That's three months. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So we have, so it's not a trial balance per se, just a list of balances, and they didn't add it up here, and I'm not going to worry to add it up, let's just take a look and see. Inventory at 31st March has closing stock, okay. Bank, cash, don't need it for the income statement. Account receivable payable, would need it. Fixtures and fittings, 
maybe depreciation. Premises, maybe depreciation, but not usually. Capital, would need it. Ah, transportation, all oh, that's carriage out as an expense. Discounts. All right, so we have discounts allowed. We need debit item. Discounts received, we need credit item. Wages and salaries, utilities, okay. Rent revenue. Ooh, we have a revenue item. Uh, loan, that's a liability. And gross income. Ooh, that's interesting. So we don't have sales, purchases, returns, and returns out, that kind of stuff. But they've given us gross income, which is gross profit. So they've actually kind of made it easier for us. All right. And additional information. So we have depreciation, 20%. Straight line, easy stuff. One employee has not been paid. Ooh, that's an accrued expense. We have to add that to the wages and salaries. All right. <clears throat> Water company has a credit of 160 per payment received. Okay, so we've paid. So utilities, including water rates, the credit means we've paid them in advance. So that's a prepayment. So you're going to have to subtract that to get the income statement figure. Uh, Mr. Davis rents parts of his shop premises to a tenant. Okay, so that's your rent revenue. Who owes, oops, he owes us 1500 in rent for the month of March. So that's an accrued revenue. And what do we do with accrued portions? We have to add them to the trial balance figure. And interest, ooh, so loan is not a, an expense, it's a liability, but there's interest on the loan. And to be calculated, it was 15% per annum. Now, what does per annum mean? That's per year. Are we doing an income statement for a whole year? Well, let's take a look. Using the form provided below, prepare an income statement, profit and loss account for the quarter ended 31st March 2015, beginning with the gross income. So the quarter means that we, we have to, anything based on a percentage that, like this interest, ooh, and this depreciation has to be adjusted for that period of time. It's not for the whole year, it's for one quarter. Let's take a start and let's let's see how we're going to be dealing with this. <clears throat> so to head up an income statement, name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies, which in this case is the quarter ended 31st March 2015. Dollar signs. Okay, so this is start with gross income. That was the instruction given to us. Add other revenue. So we have the discount allowed, discount received sort of 185, and we have the rent revenue of 3000 but don't forget. The fourth additional piece of information said that a tenant owes us $1,500 for, for March. So that's an accrued revenue which has to be added. So it looked like that, giving us total additional revenue of $4,685. Sorry, oops. Adding that will give us $13,478 before expenses. <clears throat> All right, so expenses, let's just start um, the transportation out or carriage out if you wanted to use that instead. Discounts, the $160. Wages and salaries. So don't forget, we have an accrued portion of 900. We have to add accruals. Uh, we also have water come, sorry, the, the utilities, 1180. But remember, we had, a, we had a 160 prepayment. So we have to subtract that. Uh, Mr. Davis, okay, that was the rent revenue. Um, the interest, oh, interest, 15% of 2560. But for a quarter of a year, so you multiply by a quarter, simple as that. And uh, don't forget depreciation, right? I almost forgot that. So that's 20% straight line. So you're just going to multiply that by the 7780, which is, and then multiply that by a quarter. That's going to give us 389. Total expenses, 7711. You subtract that from the 13478. Net income is 5767. There you go. Simple and straightforward. So the biggest tricks here. One, they didn't give us sales, purchases, returns and returns, all that kind of stuff, but they gave us gross income. So they made it easier. Um, biggest trick, it was for a quarter of a year, not the whole year. So anything with a percentage to be calculated had to be adjusted for that one quarter. Um, we had a, an accrual, a prepayment. Oh, and we had two items of additional revenue, one of which had an accrued portion. So always be sure to read your questions and information properly. Okay, one more. Let's tackle it. Okay, guys. So we have one more question to do, which is Ceres Lan. Let's take a look at this. So we have Ceres Land, sole trader to present financial information to its bankers to support a loan request to buy computers for the business. Okay. Following list of figures is provided for the year, year ended 31st of 2014. Okay. Um, plant the machinery, motor vehicles, long term investments, accounts receivable, closing inventories, accounts payable, bank overdraft. Everything here is a, a balance sheet item, right? Everything there is for the balance sheet. Sales revenue. Okay. Hold on, wait, sorry. Um, Okay, so sales, cost of goods available, okay, insurance prepaid, insurance paid, interest expense paid, salaries wages paid, miscellaneous expense owing at the end of the year, 
miscellaneous is paid, all right, mortgage as a long-term loan and capital at start. So what they want, income statement for the year ended December 31st, 2014. Show clearly the amounts for each of the following in the space provided, okay? Cost of goods sold, insurance, miscellaneous expenses. All right, let's get it. So we head up as per usual, which is Sarah's Lan income statement for the year ended 31st December 2014. Dollar signs, let's get sales revenue. All right, 363. Now, we don't have opening stock purchases, but we have cost of goods available, which is opening stock plus net purchases. So, sorry, less cost of goods sold. So, cost of goods available, and you have to subtract closing inventories. Doing that will give us the cost of goods sold. Subtracting that from sales revenue is gross profit. I didn't see any other revenues, so we can go straight to subtracting expenses. So, the insurance prepaid has to be subtracted from the insurance paid. Um, interest paid goes as it is, as the salaries and wages paid. There was no information about either of those having accrued or prepaid portions. Uh, miscellaneous expenses owing at year end had to be added to miscellaneous expenses paid. 4880 plus 4220 giving us 9100. Totaling that gives us 112 and subtracting that from gross profit gives us 68870. Okay, well, that was a short question, <laughs> but the biggest trick here is the way in which it was presented. It was very, it wasn't typical. And we had cost of goods available for sale given to us. So you, you have to know your inner workings to know, okay, I could use that instead of panic and I say, hey, I don't have purchases, I don't have opening stock, what am I supposed to do? All right. And they give us the prepayment, the, any adjusting items were in the body of the information as opposed to in the additional section. Right, so just, just be careful with that stuff. Just take, read properly and read thoroughly. Ooh, all right, guys, so there you have it. Three quick questions on some income statements, some possible questions, income statements, and they were relatively recently, as a matter of fact, right? Like I said, Jan 2019, 2016, 2015. Um, well, that's according to when you're watching this video, because right? it was 2025, it wasn't so recent, okay? Anyhow, uh, I will be doing another video with more income statements, but those questions, are a bit more unconventional. They won't be where you have actually opening stock and closing stock. They will be service-oriented organizations. And they were the ones that gave um, the students, um, at least the ones that I was dealing with, the, the most trouble. Because we, we get so accustomed dealing with certain types of things, we don't expand our thinking. And we need to be able to adapt to any, any situation, right? Anyhow, guys, um, this is the end for this video. I just want to say a big thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can do anything you want to do if you have the correct mindset and you put in the work. And if what you're doing isn't working, then you need to try a different approach to it. Adapt. Because change is the only constant. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.